The authorities want to pursue criminals into cyberspace and want to revamp the law to make it easier to get people who can no longer be dismissed as pranksters. That actually a 14-year-old was able to create one of the most popular underground hacking forums in the world. It's astonishing. The US prosecutors will start from the point of adulthood and ignoring the fact that the conduct may have taken place when the defendant was a minor. Surely he has established a real risk of human rights being breached should extradition proceed. Children should absolutely never be tried as adults for their crimes. Should they be held accountable? Yes. Should there be consequences for their actions? Yes. Should those consequences be the same as an adult that has a fully functioning prefrontal cortex? No. Well, my name is Bakas, and uh, I've been running a cybersecurity magazine called Hackery.com since 2011. It was in 2017, and I heard about raid forums. I was told by someone that the data leak section is blowing up. Raid forums was the go-to forum, leaks and hacks. It was a huge, not only forum, but also trading platform, exchange platform. Those databases have emails, passwords, phone numbers, all kinds of social media profiles. Raid forums has been one of the most prolific underground forums ever. Due to its nature of being in the clear net, very accessible, very easy to be found while its roots were organizing and raiding. So Omnipotent, he started raid forums so he could start his own raiding platform. The idea basically emerged with the pranking people by abusing the live stream. There's a ghost in here. <laughs> now, if you're not familiar with what a Twitch raid is, the concept behind a Twitch raid is sending viewers to another Twitch stream once yours has ended. If uh, one live stream is over on Twitch, Twitch would allow all those viewers to go to someone else's Twitch. What is happening right now? Yo, guys, how many viewers do I have? This must be a raid. Who is this? It started as a good idea that turned into disastrous pranks. They would bully people. I got a hate raid. Let's keep go. They would give bomb threats. Kids, teens, and adults all engage in this idea of kind of dark play or subversive play where the intent isn't to harm, although that is the impact. And it comes from a place of wanting to entertain people, including themselves, as well as their friends. It was not planned as this uber criminal forum platform whatsoever. I remember he posted something that no malicious activity is allowed on this forum other than just reading. The intention behind leaking data was initially just to show off that how good hacker that person is. They would leak data and they would get compliments from others and they would go for even bigger fish. The hacking that kids engage in, a lot of times it is supported and encouraged by their peers. It's not impossible for someone else to step in and say, hey, you know, you can take these skills and you can make money off of them. They found that data is very valuable, so they started selling data. That's when Omnipotent, he started to allow everything. He started providing middleman service for cyber criminals and hackers. He would work as escrow. But once the deal is done, he would take his part. Great firms made millions of dollars. The FBI, they knew Omnipotent identity for the last five years when he was a teenager. It was interesting that he started this forum at 14 that actually a 14-year-old was able to create one of the most popular underground hacking forums in the world. It's astonishing. The FBI, they knew it because he went to the United States on a visit. He was immediately taken into custody where his devices were seized. But they didn't arrest him. That he was a minor. He wouldn't get much time in prison. So they let him run the platform. Feds didn't know who controls the site, they know who's running the site. So they use it as a honeypot to collect as much information they can on buyers and vendors and then shut it down. One day I went on the forum and I noticed that Omnipotent, he's not active for last two weeks. That was absolutely unusual. That guy would be online 24-7.
Android form is seized. The database is with the, the FBI. I think he would be extradited to the United States where he's seeing big jail sentence. My name is Ben Cooper. I specialize in defending extradition cases. Mr. Santos Colo has his case currently ongoing, so it wouldn't be appropriate for me to comment. It's not uncommon for the defendants to be exposed to de facto life sentences in the US. The US prosecutors will essentially start from the point of, of adulthood, ignoring the fact that some of the, the conduct may have taken place when the defendant was a minor. I think they should have stopped him straight away. They could have rehabilitated him and he would be a better person by now. Youth who become hackers, often they are individuals who have difficulty connecting with other people, who feel socially isolated, who maybe struggle in aspects of their lives. And if a hacker space is providing that, then it makes a lot of sense that that's where they end up. Quite often, particularly in the cybercrime cases, the defendants are undiagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Larry Love was what you could describe as a hacktivist. A young man with Asperger's syndrome awaits extradition to the United States facing charges of uh, computer hacking and is then likely to kill himself. There's a long-standing underfunding of the federal penitentiary system in the United States. And so, particularly with autism, the prisons are not attending to the vulnerabilities that arise with that condition. It is not fair or just that a boy who's got mental health issues can be taken away from his family who are his support network merely to satisfy the desire of the Americans to exact what I feel is vengeance on him. Larry Love was discharged on the mental health bar because of his vulnerability. I think we have to cut these people some slack. We have an extraordinarily talented group of individuals who are figuring out how systems work they may transgress a lot of boundaries in acquiring that knowledge, and they may wreak a lot of havoc, but I think it would be wrong to mete out extraordinarily harsh or disproportionate criminal consequences to people who may not necessarily understand the consequences of their action.